For quite some time, parties have used state-level ballot initiatives uh, in an effort to motivate turnout in different ways. Uh, in 2004, we have one of the best examples of this. Uh, the Republican Party in many states began putting ballot initiatives, oftentimes constitutional amendment initiatives, uh, on ballots in a presidential year around gay marriage. Uh, gay marriage was a controversial issue in 2004, uh, but it was one that motivated Republican voters to come out to the polls. Ultimately, Republicans were quite successful in generating turnout as a result of gay marriage ballot initiatives, and it helped power President George W. Bush to re-election that year in a close match matchup with John Kerry. That trend has continued. Uh, Democrats and Republicans alike have put ballot initiatives on in election years for a variety of topics, including minimum wage, gun rights, et cetera. Um, this year, there are a large number of ballot initiatives on the ballot involving things like transportation and taxes, uh, but a few of them are more controversial. And nowhere is this more obvious than the state of North Dakota. North Dakota isn't necessarily seen as the political center of the United States, but when it comes to ballot initiatives this year, there are two initiatives that are key. The first involves the full-scale legalization of cannabis for adults to use. That is an effort by Democrats and other liberals in the state to motivate the turnout of young people and self-described liberals to help Heidi Heitkamp, the incumbent Democratic senator from that state, win re-election. To combat that, however, Republicans have put a different ballot initiative uh, on, which would make it illegal, or it would at least reiterate that it is illegal, uh, for non-citizens to vote in North Dakota elections. This is already a violation of the law in North Dakota, but this is a means of tapping into anti-immigrant rhetoric, tapping in to the same type of rhetoric that President Trump used on the campaign trail in an effort to help the Republican nominee for the Senate, Kevin Kramer, uh, to win and ultimately beat his incumbent opponent. In addition to understanding who turns out in congressional elections as having an effect on the ultimate result, turnout overall is something that has real partisan effects. Uh, the more people who turn out in elections tends to help Democrats win particularly because uh, those individuals who are less likely to turn out tend to be younger voters and they tend to be uh, poorer voters, uh, voters who oftentimes uh, vote Democratic. The complement of that is that when fewer people turn out, it tends to help Republicans, oftentimes because the most ardent, most frequent voters tend to be older voters and they tend to be conservative ones, which of course helps uh, Republicans. Uh, this year, there have been efforts in both directions, some, some efforts to restrict voting and some efforts to expand voting. Uh, for example, increasing the requirements necessary to cast votes, to get a voter ID card. Uh, make it more difficult for individuals to vote. It makes it harder for college students to vote, poor people, and people of color uh, to have access to the polls. Uh, voter registration or voter list purging is happening in states like Georgia. And the closure of voting precincts in predominantly black precincts in uh, Georgia are also efforts to reduce the vote, but also to re reduce the Democratic vote. Um, those efforts could hurt Democrats in the fall. Alternatively, there are significant grassroots efforts to get more young people and more liberal voters, more people of color registered to vote, motivated about the election in the hopes that ultimately they will cast ballots. And one unique situation that is happening in the 2018 midterm is an effort to increase the number of displaced Puerto Ricans who have come to the mainland United States uh, to relocate, uh, to get them registered to vote in voting. Despite what the president believes, uh, Puerto Ricans are American citizens. While they are not allowed to cast meaningful ballots when they live in Puerto Rico, if they relocate uh, to the mainland United States and have an address in a state like Florida, for instance, which has taken a significant number of Puerto Ricans who have been displaced by last year's hurricanes, those individuals can vote in elections, and we know uh, that uh, Puerto Ricans tend to vote Democratic. And so registration drives in places like New York and Florida, which have taken a significant number of uh, storm-displaced individuals, could not just affect uh, the number of voters who are voting in elections in those states, 
but who they are voting for in a way that significantly benefits Democrats.